Do you ever feel incredibly unmotivated and not wanting to continue on a project or something that you're working on? Even things that used to really excite you and make you want to just dive into them for hours on end, now just thinking about spending time on it makes you dread the thought of actually having to do that. This feeling is called burnout, and it's something that's incredibly common when you're learning to code and even when you're already practicing code in a full-time job. And that's because for some reason, web development and programming is kind of unique in that a lot of people expect you to have side projects and hobbies related to coding outside of work. So you spend eight hours a day working and programming all day long, and then you come home and you're expected to spend four more hours programming on the side and on the weekend you're spending time programming. And this is just so much time spent doing one particular thing that it's almost inevitable that you're going to run into burnout. So in this video, I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks that I have to help you, first of all, avoid running into burnout, and if you've already fallen into burnout, how to actually crawl your way out of it and start to enjoy learning to program and programming again. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner, and I could just say that you should program less or do less of whatever is causing you burnout, but this is pretty terrible advice because it's hard to follow and generally doesn't really help. So instead I have some concrete advice that I wanna give you. And the very first piece of advice I wanna give you is not only gonna help you get out of burnout, but also help you from getting into burnout in the first place. And that is to have a more seasonal outlook on how you actually approach programming. And this doesn't matter if you're learning to program or you're programming full-time at a job. And pretty much what I mean by this seasonal approach is that essentially you should have periods of your life where you work harder towards programming or whatever it is you wanna do, learning to code, writing projects, side projects, whatever it is. You have time where you are really hard and focus intensely on those. And then you have other periods where you do less work and maybe instead of doing a side project on the side, you're spending most of your time working at just a normal job and then you don't really have any time that you spend on your side project. Or maybe you spend like 30 minutes a day while in the more intense period you spend like three hours on the side doing it. And having these ups and downs is really important because when you're feeling super motivated and really like ready to go, you can obviously put more time and effort towards this task, but you can only sustain that higher level of effort for a certain period of time. Maybe it's a month, maybe it's two months, maybe it's even a full year. Eventually you're going to get to a point where doing all of that extra work is tiring and exhausting. So then you need to step back and have an easier period of your life. This is actually something that certain jobs already have built in. For example, most teachers, they work really hard nine months of the year, and then during the summer, they kind of have three months where they have much less workload. And this is a really great way for them to do more work during that period of nine months, and then less work during those three months, so they can really go up and down throughout the entire year. This is even something that I implement in my own job. You may notice that when I create courses, I go really hard on creating those courses. I'm doing a ton of work for an extended period of time, you know, six to 12 months to create those courses. But as soon as I'm done with those courses, I take a step back and I take at least three months where I don't do any coursework. I don't think about any additional stuff on the side. I'm just doing essentially the bare minimum, creating my YouTube videos, blog articles, all that kind of stuff, doing the bare minimum stuff that I need to do. And then after that three to six month period, sometimes it depends on how long it is, I start to get really motivated again. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm ready to start doing the next thing. Whatever that next thing is, whether it's a course, maybe going more intense on YouTube, whatever it is, I essentially have those periods where I go really hard and then I take a break after doing that hard thing because it's incredibly exhausting. It's the same thing if you're learning to program. You can go really hard trying to build out a really cool project, maybe like a social media clone, for example. And as soon as you're done building that project, don't jump straight into the next project. Instead, take a little bit of time, whether it's going to be a week, a month, maybe even multiple months, take some time where you do less work. You're still learning to program on the side, but you're not going through a super intense project. This will help make sure that you stay interested in programming and you don't burn out by doing it too much. Now, sometimes when you're doing this seasonal work, you may dip a little bit too heavily into the work that you're trying to accomplish. And let's say you wanna finish a project before you take a break. Well, maybe that project keeps extending itself. You wanna add more things and certain things get messed up. And instead of taking you two months, it now took you five months. And at the end of those five months, you're probably really exhausted and probably even burnt out. This actually happened to me recently with my courses. I was doing a bunch of work on my Next.js and React course, and I had a bunch of stuff that essentially forced me to do those courses at a quicker period of time while also doing another course on TypeScript on the side. So I had a ton of stuff that was crammed into a relatively short period of time, forcing me to do essentially a ton of work to keep up with all of it. And by the end of all of it, I was just really burnt out on essentially creating any educational content at all. My course came out in February, so it's been about three to four months. And the way that I was able to get myself through that burnout slump was just to cut back almost completely, go to the absolute bare minimum possible. So normally when you're doing this seasonal work, you kind of have ups and downs and ups and downs, but your downs aren't super low. You're still kind of maintaining a pretty good pace. 
for me, once you kind of hit that point where you get to the actual burnout or you're starting to really feel like you're hitting the edge of hitting burnout, what you need to do is cut back drastically. Don't just go down to like your maintenance level, cut down even lower, do the absolute bare minimum that you need to do to be able to keep your interest and obviously keep your job and keep learning whatever it is you're doing, but don't try to do anything above and beyond the normal. You just need to make sure that you become more excited to do this thing. And if you're constantly dreading doing it, forcing yourself to do it more is just going to make you hate it more and more and build on that burnout. So instead, it's really important to cut back as much as possible. Even if it feels like you're not making progress, or even if it feels like you're making negative progress, it's okay because in the long run, you're going to continue to want to program because after a couple months or weeks, whatever it is, you're going to be really excited and energized to start going back at a higher level. While if you continue to push yourself through burnout, essentially, you're going to hit a point where you just say, I quit, I give up, this is terrible, and you're never going to want to do anything related to programming ever again. So even though it feels like you're going slower, you're going to win the race in the long run because if you keep pushing, you're essentially going to force yourself to quit. Now, you may be worried going into this break period thinking, how am I going to know when I need to come out of this break period? Well, this is actually something that's pretty easy to figure out. If you're dreading doing programming tasks, and then you want to take a break because you're dreading doing programming, eventually you're going to get to the point where you're excited to program again. And that is the point where you know that the break is no longer needed and you can start to go back to a maintenance level or even a higher level of doing this programming work. That's what's happened to me recently. I you know, went through that period where I'm just like, I'm dreading making all these videos. I'm dreading doing this coursework. And I finally got to the point where I am now super excited. I have tons of ideas going through my head of different videos and topics and things that I want to do. And now I know I'm at the point where I'm like, you know what, I can actually start ramping things back up to a more normal pace and even maybe an accelerated pace depending on how I'm feeling. Now, another thing that you can do that's really important is instead of just constantly practicing programming and learning programming and spending all your time doing coding related tasks, you can try to do things that are tangential to programming and coding that still will help you with your end goal of becoming a better developer or landing your first web development job. And these would be things like learning how to problem solve, learning how to fix things, all those skills that you see as a developer like debugging, problem solving, those are the core important skills. And obviously as a programmer, you, we use code as our way to express those particular skills. But those are skills that you can learn independently of actually coding. So instead, what you can do is if you're normally spending like eight hours a day programming, trying to learn coding, and you're kind of feeling like you're getting a little burnt out, like it's a lot of time to spend coding, maybe cut back and do like four or five hours of coding related tasks, and then do, you know, like three hours of tasks that are tangential to it. For example, you can learn how to build something or learn how to fix something that's broken. Well, the actual way that you may fix something that's broken is going to be different than how you would do it if you were writing code. You still practice the same skills of trying to analyze a problem, break it down into individual pieces, implement a solution, iterate on it to see if that works. Those are skills you can essentially apply to anything and you can learn them from lots of different tasks. Honestly, even certain video games can be really helpful for this because there's a lot of puzzle-based video games, problem-solving based video games, even games like Factorio, which are all about like building a system, a factory. They're all very related to programming. They don't actually have you do programming, but they have you think through the same thought process you would as if you're writing code. So this is a great way if you're starting to feel burnt out on the actual act of programming and being in a text editor all day long, there's different things you can do outside of your computer or even still on the computer that give you similar levels of skills as programming, but it's going to be more about those problem solving skills particularly. So this is a really great way to help combat burnout. If you're starting to feel it, take a little step back, do some of these other more enjoyable activities on the side that are still going to give you benefits, even if they're not quite the same as programming. Now, kind of the final thing that I want to talk about is going to be related to having hobbies. Essentially, having a hobby that's not just programming is really important, and it doesn't matter what it is, but this gives you something else to be excited for. So instead of having the only thing you do be program at work, learn new things on the side, build a side project when you get home, all of those things are essentially doing the same exact thing, but in different ways. Instead, have a different hobby, like maybe you enjoy running, you enjoy biking, you enjoy working out, maybe you want to play an instrument, learn how to do something, read a book, it doesn't matter what it is, just have something else that you're passionate about. That way, if you're starting to feel a little bit more burnt out on programming or whatever it is, you can spend more time towards your other passions that you really enjoy. And those will reignite your fuel for programming. It'll just take a little bit of time. This even goes back to that seasonal point where maybe certain times you go really hard on programming and then you cut back a little bit and maybe you go really hard on weightlifting or whatever other thing that you're really into. The biggest key to all of this though, related to burnout, is you need to make sure you don't feel bad about doing less work. You may think that by cutting back and not going 100% all the time that you're gonna fall behind everyone else, but in reality, all those people that you see on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, wherever it is, that look like they're putting a million percent effort every single day into programming, there's one of two scenarios going on. Scenario one, they actually are putting in that level of effort, and within a couple months, they're probably gonna be burnt out and you're never gonna see from them again, 
or option number two is they're really not putting in as much work as it actually looks like they are. So it may look like they're going absolutely crazy, but in reality, they're really not doing as much work as it looks like. So I just want to make sure you don't feel bad if you cut back because essentially all you're doing is increasing the chances that you eventually become a programmer. There's no time limit on becoming a programmer. If you want to become a programmer in a month, you're probably going to get burnt out. That's way too quick of a timeline. So just cut back, do a little bit less work and extend that timeline slightly, add a couple months onto that timeline. And then you're going to guarantee essentially that you make it to being a programmer. While if you just constantly go at it all the time, hundred percent, odds are you're probably going to burn out and never even make it to a web development stage. Now, burnout isn't the only thing affecting web developers, which is why I have a full video covering imposter syndrome. It's linked right over here. This is the next biggest thing that a lot of developers run into. And in that video, I'll give you tips and tricks on how you can overcome imposter syndrome to increase your chances of actually becoming a web developer. Now, with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.